DC Studios and James Gunn have a huge opportunity to completely dwarf Marvel, at least in terms of having queer representation in their movies. Really, starting with this character right here, Midnighter, and his husband, Apollo, in the movie that was announced called The Authority. For those of you that don't know, The Authority was originally a comic series created by Wildstorm Comics before it was eventually bought by DC. And they were basically their version of the Justice League. And you had this character, Midnighter, who had the power to see every single battle scenario over like a thousand different times. So basically before a fight has even begun, he's already won because he's already ran through a thousand different scenarios in his head in like the minute manner of a second. And then his husband, Apollo, he was basically their version of Superman. He has super strength, speed, flight, heat vision, etc. And he's also powered by the sun. And interestingly enough, these characters were so popular that they eventually spun off into their own comic book series called Midnighter and Apollo, written by Steve Orlando. I definitely recommend you check out the Midnighter and Midnighter and Apollo run if you haven't. And of course, obviously, you're going to get some negative reaction from trolls and homophobes. Who cares about those people? But imagine the fanfare and the history that they would make as DC Studios where you see the headline, DC announces and produces the first gay superhero movie with two gay husbands and, or whatever, things like that. Like, they will go down in history and it will set the precedent and set the trend of having more representation on the big screen. And not only just that, but we've also seen with DC Studios and DC in general, back when it was the DCEU, that they're not shy or they're not opposed to pushing the envelope in a sense of doing rated R movies, rated R TV shows. That's something that Marvel hasn't really done so far. They're going to do it with Deadpool, but... They didn't even want to do it with Deadpool. Like, they even mentioned that Blade is not going to be rated R. It's going to be PG-13. But, like, they released a rated R version of Batman v Superman. Peacemaker was rated R. Um, the Suicide Squad was rated R. And so they could push the envelope even with, with regards to queer representation, with regards to these characters. Because Midnighter and Apollo, like, if you've seen in the comics, these two characters, they have sex. They get busy. And so, with it being rated R, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, we don't want to alien. And plus, these two characters in general are rated R. Like, Midnighter, he will kill people. Apollo, he will kill people. And not only just that, but they did announce that he is doing a Batman and Robin movie. And the Robin that's going to be in that movie is Damian Wayne. Well, who is Damian Wayne's best friend? Jonathan Kent. Jonathan Kent is also bisexual. So, they could have and fix something that was done in the comics where they aged up John Kent and basically got rid of a lot of history and interactions between Damien and Jonathan, which I'm still not a big fan of what Brian Michael Bendis did in aging up John Kent, but they could have, you know, a young Jonathan Kent discovering his bisexual identity, maybe having a crush on Damien Wayne and seeing that unrequited love as being a young superhero and things like that. Again, adding more queer representation. We know we're getting uh, Green Lanterns, who is a queer Green Lantern? Joe Mullaney from uh, Far Sector. You could add more queer representation in terms of that. A black queer Green Lantern. So now you have a black superhero, a black woman superhero, and a black woman queer superhero. We had the Aquaman movies. Who's connected to Aquaman? Aqualad, who's now, depending on which issue and what ones, he does take on the mantle of Aquaman. Aquaman. And... He's also a black gay super. Honestly, he's like one of the only black gay superheroes in both Marvel and DC. One of my biggest complaints, I was like, if I wanted to cosplay as a black gay superhero, I really only have Aqualad because like Prodigy is like, he's not gay, he's bisexual, yada, yada, yada. Granted, he's LGBTQ, but he's not actually gay. They can introduce Batwoman, Kate Kane, except like so many characters that they can introduce to inject queer representation. Poison Ivy. And then not just introduce them, but not shy away from their queerness, because like I mentioned before, being queer is more than just about who you sleep with. So it's not just about focusing on their bedroom partners, but it determines who you feel comfortable or not comfortable being around, the spaces that you feel comfortable or not comfortable entering, the friends that you have that you feel comfortable or not comfortable having as 
friends, the things that you're interested in, the things that you're interested in watching and not watching, your political decisions, how you walk through life, etc. And so, like I said, I highly doubt James Gunn is going to see this, but they have a huge opportunity right now to be the studio for queer representation. And hopefully they take this moment and seize it. But with that said, what are some queer characters or who are some queer characters that you would hope and want to see show up in this new iteration of the DC Universe and DC Studios? And on top of that, being that they mentioned that Peacemaker Season 1 is no longer canon because it kind of ties into the original DCEU because we got to saw we saw Zack Snyder's Justice League show up at the end of that season but now we have we're in a new DC universe and so they said season 2 is going to be a soft reboot well guess what they kind of alluded or not even alluded they basically said that peacemaker is bisexual they have a huge opportunity right there to actually show it because they didn't really show him have any crushes or any type of inclination that he had feelings for another man. He was always going after hardcore, but he never mentioned having actual feelings for another man. I personally ship him and Vigilante. Maybe not as lovers, but they should be at least having sex. Like the person that plays Vigilante and John Cena, they're both attractive looking men. And I don't and they were and they were in bed together in that one threesome scene. They should be having sex with each other. But that's that's another opportunity that they could take for season two. I don't know. I have so many ideas, but like I said, I know James Gunn is going to see this, but what do you guys think? Like, share, comment. Hopefully you made it to the end of this video for the watch time. Like, share, comment, interact for the all-gay rhythm. Make it blacker. Make it gayer.